In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about the legendary VLOOKUP function. Now I know what you're thinking. Why do we even need to know how to use VLOOKUP now that XLOOKUP exists? Well, I personally think that VLOOKUP isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and that there is value in knowing how to use both functions, along with the limitations and differences between the two. So that's why I created this three-part VLOOKUP vs XLOOKUP YouTube series. To kick it off, we are going to cover all things VLOOKUP, so let's get started. VLOOKUP is a famous Excel function used to find information within data. VLOOKUP looks up a value in the first column of a data table and returns a corresponding value in a column to the right. First things first, let's go over the VLOOKUP function's arguments. The first argument is the lookup value which is the value you are searching for. Here, we are looking up which state Bill Bates lives in, so Bill Bates is the lookup value. Next is the table array argument, which is the array of data you are searching. In this case, we are looking up Bill's information in this data table, so it's selected as the table array. Now, it's important to note that the value you are searching for must be in the first column of the data selected, and the value that you want to return has to be in a column to the right, Otherwise, VLOOKUP will return an error. The third argument is the call index num, which indicates which column of the table array you want to return. The first column of table array has a column index of 1 and increases by 1 for each additional column to the right. It is set to 3 here because we want to return the state Bill lives in, which is in the third column of the data table. Last but not least, the range lookup argument. Range lookup is an optional argument that determines whether to search for an exact match or an approximate match. If range lookup is equal to false, VLOOKUP will only search for an exact match of the lookup value and return an error if it's not found. If the range lookup is set to true and an exact match of the lookup value isn't found, VLOOKUP will search for an approximate match and return the value corresponding to the closest match that is less than the lookup value. If the range lookup argument is omitted, VLOOKUP will automatically default the value to true and perform an approximate search. Now that we know VLOOKUP's arguments, let's take a look at a few examples and use them in action. Here we have sales data and our boss asks us to research the sale ID and send him the representative it's assigned to. We can quickly look up this information using the VLOOKUP function. To look up the representative corresponding to this sale ID, First, enter the VLOOKUP function followed by an open parenthesis. Next, we need to enter the value we are searching for as the lookup value, so I'm going to select the sale ID in cell B3. The next argument we need to enter is the table array argument, which is the data table we are searching with the lookup value in the first column. So I'm going to go ahead and select the entire sales data table. The third argument is the call index num argument which is the column number of the data table that contains the data we want to return. In this case, we need to enter a two because we want to return the representative in the second column of the data table. The last argument we need to enter is the range lookup argument. In this case, we want to set range lookup equal to false because we want to return information corresponding to this exact sale ID. If we entered true and the sale ID wasn't in this data table, VLOOKUP would return a representative corresponding to a different sale ID, which would be incorrect. Now that we have entered all four arguments, we can enter the function to automatically return the representative assigned to the sale ID. Now that we've learned how to search for an exact match, let's learn how to find an approximate match using VLOOKUP. In this example, we have a list of score thresholds corresponding to each letter grade, and we want to know what grade Emma got based on her exam score. This is a perfect scenario to use VLOOKUP's approximate search functionality. To do this, enter the VLOOKUP function and select Emma's exam score as the lookup value. Next, make sure that the exam scores are in the first column of the data table and then select it as the table array argument. Once the table array is selected, enter a two as the call index num argument because we want to return the corresponding letter grade in the second column of the data table. Last but not least, we need to set range lookup equal to true so that if her exact score isn't found, VLOOKUP will search for the closest score less than hers. 
Now just enter the function, and as you can see, if you look up return to letter grade of a B, because it corresponds to 80%, which is the closest value less than her score of 87%. One essential thing to note is that the column containing the lookup value has to be sorted in ascending order for an approximate search to work. If the values aren't sorted in ascending order, VLOOKUP won't be able to find the closest match that is less than the lookup value and will return an incorrect result. As you've seen so far, VLOOKUP is a powerful function that allows you to quickly look up information, but it has a lot of limitations that are critical to understand. The first major limitation of VLOOKUP is that it can only return values to the right of the lookup value. So for example, if the data in example one was arranged in this order, we would not be able to return the representative corresponding to the sale ID because the representative column is to the left of the sale ID column. We would have to rearrange the data table before using VLOOKUP in order for it to work. Another limitation is that VLOOKUP can only search for the lookup value from top to bottom and will return the value corresponding to the first match it finds. So if there are duplicate values of the lookup value in the data, VLOOKUP will always return the corresponding value to the first instance of the lookup value. Another hiccup I've mentioned a few times now is that the lookup value has to be in the first column of the table array or else the function will not be able to find a match. For example, if the data in example one was arranged in this order, we would have to select columns C through F as the table array argument so that the lookup value is in the first column. There are also a lot of other minor limitations, such as no option for a default value if an exact match isn't found, the data has to be sorted in a particular order for an approximate match search to work, only being able to return one value, and so on. Now that you've mastered VLOOKUP, hopefully you can see why it's been an Excel phenomenon when working with data, despite its limitations. The good news is that the new and improved XLOOKUP function addresses all the constraints of VLOOKUP. To learn how to use the XLOOKUP function, subscribe to our channel and tune in next week for the second part of the series on mastering XLOOKUP.